So welcome back to Spine Tingling and today uh, we're going to look at C3 to C5. So we've already looked at the atlas and the axis and I'm Catherine Smith, I'm a craniosacral reflexologist and these are short videos for craniosacral reflexology students and other reflexologists. So the, we've looked at the atlas, the axis, and today on the body of the spine, we'll look at the C3, C4, and C5, okay? And one of the reasons we're looking at C3, 4, and 5 is because the ophrenic nerve arises from these nerves. Now, that's my handy post-its. I'm getting very high tech. And uh, the phrenic nerve mostly comes from C4, but we have contributions from C3 and C5. And it has, it's a mixed nerve, so it has uh, mixed fibres that um, move things, so motor fibres that sense, that have a sensory um, function, so sensory fibres, and sympathetic fibres, so it's attached to our nervous system. So, we are going to look at the motor fibre today. And one of the reasons we're looking at the motor fibres of the phrenic nerve is because they move the diaphragm. And that's really, really important in reflexology and craniosacral reflexology, but also for the whole body, because the interconnections between the diaphragm and the spine can have an effect on the health of the whole body. So the phrenic nerve, before we look at the spine, can, because it moves the, the diaphragm, really has an impact on the, our quality of sleep because our quality of sleep often depends on the quality of our breath. So sometimes you'll get clients coming in who have sleep disorders like sleep apnea, um, insomnia, uh, fatigue because people just don't get the good quality sleep they need and sometimes with children they can have poor sleep or poor quality sleep and sometimes that's because they've had a trauma or a little torque or a twist on the phrenic nerve at the birth process um, but also the phrenic nerve is involved with hiccuping so I don't know if you get many people coming in for hiccuping but if you do you know what to work <laughs> so the phrenic nerve attaches to it uh, runs down through like in the metastinal and they run down past the heart and the lungs and down into the diaphragm and there's there's two there's one on the left one on the right and what's really interesting about the diaphragm is it has a very strong relationship with lower back pain. And that's because of the attachments of the spine. So we have uh, the central tendon, which is, if, if you think of the spine, or sorry, the diaphragm as a umbrella, it'd be the very top the very dome of the umbrella, that's the central tendon. And the central tendon attaches to the xiphoid process of the, of, at the end of the sternum. So we have the manubrium, the sternum, which is our breastbone, and then the xiphoid process is right at the end and the central tendon attaches to it. Then we have costal attachments, that means ribs, so easy. So at the side, the ribs, the, the diaphragm attaches to ribs 7 to 12. So we have costal attachments at the side and then we have the diaphragm comes back to meet the spine. So the back of the, the diaphragm moves down to meet the spine and it attaches, that's a, a moving, uh, sorry about that, it attaches on the left side at L1 and L2, where my green post-its are, and on the right side at L1, L2 and L3. So it has an attachment to the spine itself, okay? And it attaches with a little tendon called the crew. And sometimes these are known as the pillars of the diaphragm, but the crew I have found in a lot of anatomy and physiology books and texts. So. The, the crew attached, and they're very strong, short, small, but very, very strong muscles that really like hold the diaphragm down. And what's really interesting about the crew and the entire spine is that we also, the crew has 
an attachment through fascia has an attachment to a ligament that runs the entire length of the spine so all the way down and that ligament attaches right up at the top really the base of the skull and it runs at the body of the spine the body of the spinal bones the vertebrae and it's called the anterior which means in the front longitudinal because it's very long <laughs> and, uh, ligament okay so the anterior longitudinal ligament so the central tendon sorry the crew of the diaphragm attach with fascia to the central ten uh, the the uh, central tendon is in my head it attaches to the anterior longitudinal ligament all the way down and what's really interesting as well is that the diaphragm also attaches to two very important back muscles. We have the psoas, such an important muscle, and its origin or where it begins is at L1 and all the way down to L5. So you can really understand why the psoas has such an uh, impact on, on lower back pain. It comes down and we have the major psoas and the iliopsoas. it comes down and attaches to the top of the leg or the, the lesser trochanter of the leg. So you have the big ball of the leg, the big ball and socket part, and then the smaller one at the bottom. So it's the, the lesser trochanter that it, it attaches to. If you look at a leg bone, you'll see that. So it's onto the femur. So it attaches from the spine to the femur. And you also have the quadrus quadratus lumborum sorry the quadratus lumborum and that starts the iliac crest okay that's the origin and it comes up from the iliac crest and attaches to l1 l2 l3 and l4 so it's got an attachment from the hip all the way to the spine and this stabilizes your pelvis and it also stabilizes the rib cage as well so you have um the psoas that is involved with with the lower back and the quadrat quadratus lumborum and that has a relationship with the hip so it can cause issues if there's problems in it issues such as hip pain and sciatica and also back pain okay so and it stabilizes your hip your pelvis and your pelvis and your rib cage okay so you can see when clients come in and they're having problems with lower back pain it may not be the origin of the problem the origin of the problem might be way up here in the phrenic nerve in the neck okay it may be poor quality breathing so when people are coming um, with back pain having a look at their breathing uh, patterns and the quality of their breath might answer some questions okay so I hope that was helpful and not too complex it's it's getting interesting now <laughs> and uh, we'll we'll get back for another spine tingling soon thank you